All right, welcome to Flash Video Basics Part 1. Uh, in this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a basic Flash movie that can play back external Flash video files, your .flv files. So the first thing I've done is to create a new Flash document, and I've saved it into the same directory where my .flv file is. And the video for this project that I'm using are these shots here that I took recently in Vegas at the Photoshop World Conference. So here it is in QuickTime, but I've gone and converted it to an FLV file. Okay, the first thing you should always do when starting a new Flash document is to designate a layer to hold all of your action script. So rename that first layer to Actions, and you're going to want to lock it. Locking it prevents you from putting any visual assets onto this layer. It will be strictly code. That way, if you need to update it later, or more importantly, if somebody else has to come in and look at your file, they'll know exactly where to look for the action script. It really helps in keeping it organized. So uh, after that, we're going to create a new layer, and we're going to call this one Video. This is the layer that will actually display your video data. So again, we have the visuals on one layer and the action script on its own layer. For those of you who are using Flash MX 2004 Professional, you may have seen in the components panel over here these media components. These are pre-baked uh, video components that Macromedia has provided. One is a controller, one is just a display of the video, and another is a combination. Uh, I don't recommend these because they increase your file size considerably and they're next to impossible to modify or to change the appearance of and that's really the whole purpose of using flash video so the next thing you're going to need to do is to create an embedded video object and the way to create that is to go to your library panel and over here on the right you see this little button it's kind of hidden away but from this list that comes down you're going to choose new video so Flash will then create an embedded video object and put it into your library. You can think of this video object as kind of like your TV in your living room. This is the actual object that will display your video. So we're going to drag that out to the stage. As you can see right now, it's brought it out at the default size, which is way too small. So I need to change the dimensions of this to match my video. So my video is at 320 by 240. Okay, so now it's at the right size. Let me center it up. Okay, I'm going to be using ActionScript to tell this video object what to play. So, like anything else that I want to address in ActionScript, I'm going to have to give it an instance name. So, I'm going to call it the video. This is what I call all my embedded video objects. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. Okay, so now we're done with our work out on the stage. So, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to lock that video layer and highlight the first keyframe in the actions layer. This is where our action script is going to live. So I come down and open the actions panel. And this is not meant to be an introduction to action script by any means. So if you, some of the code is confusing to you, uh, there's plenty of good tutorials on action script. So the first thing we're going to do here is to create a net connection object. The net connection object you can think of as like the cable coming out of the wall from the cable company. Uh, inside of it can be multiple channels of media, but it's that main pipeline to the outside world. So if you're wondering what that colon net connection is next to the variable name, that's what's called strict data typing. It's a way to tell Flash that this is explicitly a net connection object. So if I tried later on to say assign a string to NC, it would give me warnings. And it's just a good way to prevent type mismatches in your code. The net connection object is often used to connect to Flash communication server. And you use the connect method here to do so. But since we're not using Flash comm server, we need to call the method and give it a null value, just to tell Flash that this is not a Flash communication server project. So the last object we're going to have to create is a net stream object. And again, going back to the real world, uh, the net stream would be a single channel coming from the cable company. So it's a single stream of media which is coming through the net connection object. So when we write the code to create it, we're going to pass the net connection object to the constructor. So we're saying which net connection object this net stream should come through. So now we need to tell the embedded video object that's out on the stage which stream of video to play. And to do that, we're going to call the attach video method and send to it 
the netstream object that we just created. So we're saying take the video that's coming through the netstream and attach it to that embedded video object. Okay, so the last step in the process is to tell the netstream where to find your video. And to do that, we're going to call the play method and give it the URL to our FLV file. This completes the code needed to simply play an external FLV video. Um, this block of code, unfortunately, is not very in intuitive, and uh, you'll either have to memorize it or just save it out as a snippet, because every time you work with uh, FLV files, you're going to have to use this code. So let's go ahead and test our movie. And we have video playing. So this was a little painful. We had to do a little bit of action script coding, but now you have uh, the groundwork needed to do the really fun stuff, which is to make your own player, to add interactivity to your videos, and that's what I'll be talking about uh, in future versions of this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, thanks for watching.